Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So in this series, we've been building this processor. And in the last episode, it was reverted back to 16 bits. It's looking very nice. It's still working. No problem. And all of the tests pass. Yep. So in this episode, I'd like to go into instruction formats and things like that. Currently in this processor, the instruction formats are pretty simple, but having only a single instruction format, it's a little bit limiting when you only have 16 bits. So I'd like to dive into, I guess what I call instruction set architecture or instruction set design, I guess. I don't know. So spreadsheet time. So this is a representation of all of the different instruction formats that I would like to support in this processor. This is kind of an initial draft, so it may change, but I'm relatively happy with it. So as you can see on the top, all of the bits from zero to 15 are lined up. So instructions are 16 bits wide and you can kind of get a feel for the kinds of different instructions that are supported. I've made it so that these instructions don't count because these are more fundamental instructions, but I did move NOP into this category here. So no operation will be a valid opcode. That was mainly because if we stall the processor because I don't know why we would stall the processor, it's nice to add a NOP value into a pipeline if we do a pipeline at all, which we probably won't, but um, yeah. So it's nice to have a NOP to do that. And otherwise it's nice to have like an instruction that you can send to the ALU while you're doing something else, just to tell it not to do anything. So that's that. I might be able to find a different instruction for NOP, but yeah, work in progress. So um, where to start on this? These M fields are the immediate fields, what I've been calling the value. And you'll notice that it's not always eight bits now. It's either 11 bits or five bits. And of course, if you add those together, you get 16 bits. So there's a way that you can get a 16 bit value easily for an immediate. So up at the top here, we've got our load store instructions. Uh, these load and store from memory, and there's only four of them. They take two registers, these two are added together, the immediate field and the RS, in order to determine an address. So RS could be, for example, the stack pointer or the base pointer or whatever. And with that, you can figure out the address where to load or store RD. Then we have our ALU ops. And these can either have an immediate or not. So they are either a two reg ALU op, or it takes a, an immediate instead of a register. So there's 16 of those, which is kind of nice, actually. That's fairly roomy. Then we have uh, what are called CSR operations. Uh, CSR is computer status register. Sometimes it's also called PSR for processor status register. And there's 16 of those. And very likely we won't have more than maybe three or four four, but uh, there might be a reason to have more potentially. I don't know. We'll see. Then we have our R only uh, ALU ops. So these are operations that only take a single register. And then we've got our jump instructions. So we've got jump, uh, jump and link, which is our way of doing procedure calls. And we've got branch if true and branch if false, because this processor will have only a single status flag and that'll be overloaded for both the carry flag and the um, comparison flag. And then we've got our break instruction, our immediate instruction. So the immediate instruction will allow you to specify the uppermost 11 bits of the very next instruction. And it's always the very next instruction. So then those two instructions become coupled together and they execute uninterrupted. That way you don't have to worry about trying to save the s status of the immediate 
register, the internal immediate register that's used to, to transfer the value to the next instruction. And the same thing will happen with the T flag, for lack of a better name for it, that's involved in conditional instructions. And yeah, this is the format code. So there's five different formats, and they're all encoded directly in the instruction. And for these instructions, the opcode is directly encoded in the instruction itself, which is nice. So there's no decoding needed for the opcode for these, but there is decoding needed for the immediate bearing instructions. And there is four of them. So that's what you get down here. This is just denoting the decoding logic. So you've got format codes. Uh, they correspond with these. and what the opcode should decode to in those cases. And in these cases here, the opcode, well, in all of these, the opcode is just directly from the instruction itself, so that should be easy. In this top case, then it is this line here. So that's where they that's where this goes in the opcode space. And you'll see that the opcode space is the same for these two even though they're different formats and what distinguishes them is this bit here that indicates whether it's a two register um, well it in indicates if there's a valid immediate essentially um, or if it's a two register so and i suppose i could invert this to make it the same as what we currently have which is a two reg so it has the opt opposite semantics i could fix that later so yeah, the only weird thing is where the load store happens. The load store is at the very beginning of the opcode space, and it overlaps the opcodes for these ones. And that's kind of on purpose, because I want to keep the opcodes themselves to just five bits. So there's kind of an extra bit, a sixth bit, called the system bit, that um, indicates whether it is one of these system instructions. And there's Currently only room for four of them, so um, can't go crazy there. Likely halt will be added to this list. And yeah, so if the system bit is high, then a NOP will be sent to the rest of the processor. And one of these instructions will happen instead. And these will be handled kind of at a higher level within the processor. Break and halt, just do something with the clock. And RETS will switch from system mode to user mode or back. So RETS kind of doubles as a syscall instruction as well. And of course, M just stores the value in an internal immediate register and moves on to the next instruction. So this is the instruction set architecture of this processor. And I'd like to just go through a bit of a montage of trying to build a decoder for this and get the decode logic working for this in instruction set format. Let's do that. So just creating a embedded circuit here. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly what inputs I need and what number of bits are required for them as well. And the outputs. I often like to just decode like a an input value using a decoder and pull the lines off and then sometimes it's nice to name things so that it's a little bit easier to follow. And I'm trying to decide how to do the opcode bits here. I end up deciding that using the format is probably best with a multiplexer. So I'm trying to figure out how to do the first few opcodes there. The goal is to try and produce an opcode value that's just a 5-bit value. And so just wiring that up using the op, op fields and the thumped field.
This particular one uses some of the bits from the FUMF field, and it's encoded to kind of a wildcard, the one XX that you see there. And here I'm just tidying things up a little bit. Uh, I decided against naming these for whatever reason, so I'm just undoing that now. And now I'm just testing it out, making sure that so far it works the way that I would expect it to. So I'm just testing out all of the different formats and making sure that they're, it's pulling in the fields from the opcode that I would expect. And of course my standard fixing the color so it's blue instead of yellow. And here I'm trying to put it into the decoder circuit so that it actually does what I'm wanting. So here I'm pulling out each of the fields. I'm just looking at the top of the diagram that I have in my spreadsheet and I'm taking the bit ranges and entering them into a splitter so that each of the fields comes out and then I'm giving them a name using tunnels. And then I decided they were too cramped together, so I'm just spreading them out a little bit. And I decided to try some LEDs. I think I removed these in just a moment. Then I get stuck on an error and I feel like now's a great time to do the sign extension of the immediates. And now I've decided that I need more information. So I'm decoding which fields are in the instruction are valid for the current instruction. So I need to know if the M5 field is valid or the M11 field or RS. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how to do that. So I'm just taking the instruction format and putting it into an OR gate. So for most of the fields, it, there's two different instructions where those are valid. Uh, two different instruction formats, that is. And here I'm trying to decide whether or not I need the RD valid. I th think I decide to leave it in the end. And here I've decided that naming things is better rather than having crisscrossing wires everywhere. So I guess it's a matter of if you've got a bunch of crisscrossing wires, then it's probably better to name them. If they don't cross, then it might be better just to use a wire. I don't know, it's kind of a judgment call as to what, what looks more readable. Sometimes naming things really helps a lot. In this case, I feel like naming things helps a ton. So here I'm, I'm saying, okay, so the RI and the LS format uh, have a valid M5 and sys instructions have a valid M11 and I11 is also valid for that. And I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the RD, but I think I've figured it out now. And it's pretty much the same as M11 valid, um, except that it's negated on the end, so I switch to a NOR gate.
now I've decided that for debugging purposes, it would be nice for our blinking lights to output some of those. Now it's to be continued. So in the ne next episode, we'll continue where we left off here. I feel like we're really close and that this turned out really well, actually. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you have any comments about this or any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. Bye.